Hi girls, I hope the revision is going well. Um, so I've made this video, I just want to go through all of the handout that I gave you before the midterm. Um, obviously, question one was, to, was from the last test, so if you want to watch the link to question one, it's on the video above me here. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that was a really, really good question, and I'm hoping to find one very similar to it to give you on this test. But question two here is a logs question, and it's similar enough to question one, so let's go through this one. You're given p times 5 to the power y plus 5 to the power minus y equals 5, and you're asked to form a quadratic, and you're being told to let x equal to 5 to the power y. So these are like all the quadratics we were doing at the start of the year in our logs chapter. Clearly the problem you have here is you need to get rid of the powers. Okay, So you should recognize that if there's a minus, there's going to be something to do with a fraction involved. So they've already given you a hint, and they've told you to let x equal to 5 to the power y. Which means that if you look at your first term, I have absolutely no problem with my first term because, right, clearly the p stays the same, but instead of my 5 to the power of y, I can just sub in x. So my first term just becomes 5x, there's no problems there. Clearly the number on this side is just a 5, so that's going to stay the same. So my only issue at the moment is what to do with this term. I have 5 to the power of minus y. One of your rules of powers says that 1 over a to the power of p is equal to a to the power of minus p. With that in mind, you should, you should recognize I can use that rule to get rid of my negative power here. If I have 5 to the power of minus y, that's like having the right-hand side of this formula. So 5 to the power of minus y is the same as 1 over 5 to the power of y. So at least now I've gotten rid of my complication, which was a negative power. Once I've gotten rid of that, you should recognize, look at your substitution. Instead of 5 to the power of y, I can put in an x, which means that this actually just becomes 1 over x. I'm going from right to left there, but I hope it makes sense. So 5 to the power minus y is the same as 1 over 5 to the power of y, which based on my substitution is the same as 1 over x, which means that if you look back at your original line, the middle term becomes 1 over x. So I can just rewrite this as px plus 1 over x equals 5. Now, if you look at this line, you should recognize that your complication is your fraction. In order to get rid of this fraction, you would need to multiply this by x. But you can't just randomly multiply one of your terms by x. If you're going to multiply that by x, you have to multiply everything by x. So on the next line, I'm just going to multiply everything by x. If I multiply px by x, I'll get px squared. If I multiply 1 over x by x, I'll just get 1 and if I multiply 5 by x, I'll get 5x. So now, if you look at what the question asked me, I'm very close. All you need to do now is bring your 5x across, and you've got your quadratic. So when you bring your 5x to the other side, it becomes minus 5x plus 1 equals 0. So your final answer for that bit is px squared minus 5x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so technically now this is I'm not going to give you something like this on the test for B part one we haven't done any questions like this yet but it's only going to take us about 30 seconds and I want to introduce you to it we did something similar to this in class uh, you're being asked to prove find the value of P for which this has real roots so you should realize that that's this in this form it's absolute gibberish you need to use that in this form I know that that quadratic is the same as px squared minus 5x plus 1 so the actual question is to find the value of p for which this quadratic has real roots. Now I very, very briefly talked to you about this in one of our classes. I'm not considering this, I won't give you something like this on the test, but in one of the classes I told you that in order for a quadratic equation to have real roots, that means that b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. So to prove this quadratic has equal roots, you need to, you, to find the value of p for which this is equal roots, you need to sub into this and find the value of p. Now this is taken directly from my minus b formula. So from your minus b formula, a is the number in front of x squared, which in this case will be p. b is the number in front of x, which in this case is minus 5. And c is the, is the number on its own, which in this case is a plus 1. So based on that, I know my a, b, and c. I can sub into this and find the value of p. Instead of b squared, I can put in minus 5 to be squared. Minus 4 times, instead of a, I can put in a 1 instead of c, or sorry, instead of a, I can put in a p, instead of 1, I, instead of c, I can put in a 1. Let it equal to 0. Minus by minus gives me plus 5 by 5 is 25. Minus 4 by p by 1 is minus 4p equals 0. 
Now I've got one equation, one unknown. It's relatively straightforward to find your p. You want to bring your 25 to the other side, and you get minus 4p equals minus 25. In order to get p on its own, you're going to divide both sides by minus 4. So that means that p is minus 25 divided by minus 4, and a minus divided by a minus gives me a plus. So my final answer in that case is that p is equal to 25 over 4. Okay, that's more the kind of thing we're going to be moving on to in the next chapter. So for the moment, don't worry too much about it. Okay, so for the final part of this question, the wording on it is slightly dodgy. They told you, hence or otherwise, solve the quadratic. Now, I don't think they've worded it properly because they should have said, they should have said, assuming the quadratic has equal roots, solve it. In other words, using your answer to be part one, solve it. But what they meant to imply was you have to use your value from b part 1 in order to solve your quadratic. So if you have 25 over 4x squared minus 5x plus 1 equals 0. Now one way of doing it is you can actually multiply everything by 4 and you'd actually be able to work out your quadratic yourself. But I've chosen to go through it using the minus b formula. a is 25 over 4, b is minus 5 and c equals 1. When you work your way through it, notice b squared minus 4ac is 0 this time, which means you get equal roots. So that means x equals 0 0.41 and x equals 0 0.41. So your final answers there would just be that. Again, don't worry too much about part B of this question. I'm not going to give you something like that, although I am going to give you something like the first part of the question. In the next part of the question, you're given this simultaneous equation. x minus y equals 1, x minus 5 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 32. Two equations, two unknowns, means you can find the value of x, you can find the value of y. The problem is I've got a squared in it. You need to recognize that if you have a squared, you have to take your simple equation and isolate either your x or your y. So you'll notice here that I chose to isolate x. Brought my y to the other side, so x is 1 plus y. Once I've isolated one of my letters, I can just go back to my more complicated equation. And I rewrite this exactly as it is except instead of an x, I can put in 1 plus y. If I simplify that, I get y minus 4 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 32. Now, I skipped my lines here, but if I multiply y minus 4 by y minus 4, I'll get y squared minus 8y plus 16. So I did that twice, and it's equal to 32. When you group everything together here, you end up with y squared minus 8y equals 0. So I've started that up here. If y squared minus 8y equals 0, the only way to factorize that is to factorize out your y. If you take out y, you're just left with y minus 8. So these are your two factors, and you let each one equal to 0 to get your roots. So you can say y equals 0, or you can say y minus 8 equals 0, which means y equals 8. Once you've got your two values of y, you can sub back into this to find your values of x. I know that x is 1 plus y, or in other words, just 1 bigger than y. So if, x, if y is 0, then x is 1 plus 0, which is 1. If y is 8, then x is 8 plus 1, which is 9. Now, that's probably the, the most generic way of doing that question, but there's actually a much, much easier way of doing that question. So, gold star for anyone who on Monday can tell me a much quicker and easier way of doing that question. Okay, so the next part of the question, uh, this I really want to highlight this one. Uh, we did a very little bit, we did a tiny little bit about fractions and factorizing. So, Questions like this often come up, especially I think I've seen a lot of them in leaving certain mock questions in leaving certain mock papers. But I want to stress this kind of thing. We haven't done anything exactly like this, and it's very straightforward. But if you don't recognise it, you could struggle a bit. First of all, I've got one fraction divided by another fraction. You never want to divide one fraction by another fraction. Dividing by this fraction is the same as multiplying and you invert it. So to simplify that a little bit, if you have, say, 3 over 2 divided by 5 over 4, that's like 3 over 2 divided by 5 over 4, you never divide by a fraction. Three, instead of dividing by 5 over 4, that is the same as multiplying by 4 over 5. So rather than dividing by this fraction, I'm going to invert it and multiply by it. So if you get a question like this, you never want to divide one fraction by another. So I'll just leave the first one as it is, and instead of dividing by this fraction, I'm going to flip it and multiply. So dividing by this is the same as multiplying by x squared minus 2x minus 35 over 5x plus 25. Now at this stage, what you want to do is factorize, factorize, factorize. Just factorize as much as you possibly can, 
and usually nearly everything will cancel. So clearly on the top of the first fraction, there's nothing I can do, it's just a 5. But on the bottom of the first fraction of a quadratic equation, if you factorize this, you'll end up with x minus 7 times x plus 2. Okay, so obviously you can do that in your rough work, but that's what you'll get. And then if I multiply by this, clearly on the top I can factorize because I have another quadratic. If you factorize the top, you're going to get x minus 7 times x plus 5. And on the bottom you can also factorize. You have 5x plus 25, so you can factorize out your common number. You can factorize out 5, and you're left with x plus 5. Now these questions are nice because usually nearly everything will cancel. Because I'm multiplying this fraction by this fraction, anything that's on top on the left, anything that's on the top will cancel with anything that's on the bottom. So 5 on the top, multiplying by 5 and 5, they cancel each other out. x plus 5 and x plus 5 cancel each other out. x minus 7 and x minus 7 cancel each other out. So I'm actually just left with an x plus 1 on the, top, on the bottom. Now, technically I shouldn't have been saying cancelling out. Actually what's happening is 5 divides into 5 once. x plus 5 divides into x plus 5 once. 7 minus x divides into 7 minus x once. Which means that you left, you're left on the top of the fraction with a 1. And then on the bottom of the fraction with x plus 2. So don't forget to write your final line. Your, la your final answer is 1 over x plus 2. Okay, so the next question I gave you starts off with you've got x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 2. Don't worry about that. That's in the next chapter. We're not, we haven't done that yet. It's actually relatively straightforward, but we haven't done it yet, so don't worry about it. Um, the question I've given you there is actually 2016 paper 1 question 2. So I only want you to worry about the simultaneous equation bit, but I'm going to put the video for this underneath me here. So if you want to just go to my link for 2017 paper 1 question 2, you can watch that video there. Okay, so girls, for me, this question is a question three, is the most important question in this revision sheet. I want you to be really clear on this. Um, the first one here, you're given a graph and you're asked to, to come up with a polynomial. Um, be really, really clear on the difference between factors and roots. If you're given a graph like this, you can read what the roots are. The roots, not the factors. So if it intersects at minus two, that means that one of my roots is x equals minus 2. If it intersects at 4, that means that one of my roots is x equals plus 4. If it turns at 1, that means I have two roots. At a turning point, there's two roots if it turns at the x-axis. That means I have two roots at x equals 1 and x equals 1. If I'm trying to come up with a polynomial, the roots are useless to me. I don't want the roots. I want the factors. So if x equals minus 2 is a root, that means that you bring the 2 across, that means that x plus 2 is a factor. So one of my factors is x plus 2. If x equals 1 is a root, you bring the 1 across and it becomes minus, that means that x minus 1 is a factor. If x equal, and the same here, obviously, I get x minus 1, so two, two factors that are the same. For this one, if x equals 4 is a root, that means that you bring the 4 across, x minus 4 is a factor. If you know the four factors, you just need to multiply all four factors by each other, and that'll give you the polynomial. So let's do that now on the next page. Okay, so for this bit, you kind of just need to be careful. You're multiplying all four factors by each other. So you can't obviously multiply them all by each other at once. So I decided to take the first two here, and I multiplied them by each other, and I got x squared plus 1x minus 2. I took the second two, and I multiplied them by each other, and got x squared minus 5x plus 4. Now we just need to multiply this quadratic by this quadratic. You take the first thing in the first bracket, multiply it by the second bracket. Second thing in the first bracket, multiply it by the second bracket. The last thing in the first bracket by the second bracket. Then you just have to multiply it out and be careful. Your final line, you group your x to the pair of 4s, x to the pair of 3s, x to the pair of 2s, x's and numbers. And there's one thing you have to be careful of in a question like this. You need to worry about, is should there be a plus in front of the x to the pair of 4 or a minus in front of the x to the pair of 4? Remember we did a little bit on shapes. Um, if it's an x to the power of 4, it will behave the same way as an x to the power of 2. It will behave the same way as an x to the power of 2, because it's an even power. So x to the power of 2 starts off the same as an x to the power of 4. I know if, the, if, the, if I have a plus x to the power of 2, it's a positive, it's a smiley face, or it's a u-shape. So that means a plus x to the power of 4 will start off as a, plus, as a u-shape. A plus x to the power of 6 
plus x to the power 8, plus x to the power 10, they'll all start off as u-shapes. So in this case, because it starts off as a u-shape, this one is positive, so I have no problem. If it had been the other way, if it started off as an n, that's the same as a minus x squared. So if it was starting off like this, that would mean that there should be a minus in front of that, and that would mean you'd have to change the signs of everything on that line. But in this case, it started off as a u, so I'm happy out. This is my answer. In the next part of this question, you're asked to investigate if 3x minus 1 is a factor of, and you're given a cubic. Now, I want to just discuss this with you because there's two options here. Probably what most of you decided to do was, you can divide, if you divide this into the cubic, if the remainder is 0, then that means it's a factor. So in this case, it's actually not a factor. So if you divide it in, you should get a remainder of 6. If you get a remainder of 6, then you know, okay, it's not a factor. The alternative to that, and definitely the easier way of doing that question is, even though the question says investigate if this is a factor, you're actually allowed to just get the corresponding root and investigate if that is a root. So that's what I've decided to do here. I said, right, my factor is 3x minus 1 equals 0, so that means that 3x equals 1, which means the corresponding root is x equals 1 third. So I've just decided to investigate if x equals 1 third is a root. So everywhere there's an x, I just put in one third, and when I, si when I simplified it down, I got six. Six is clearly not equal to zero. So my conclusion is that x equals, that should be plus one third. My conclusion is that if x equals one third, that x equals one third is not a root. And by extension, three x minus one is not a factor. So just be aware you have two different options there. Be careful if you decided to go down the long division route, you only get the full marks if you end up with a remainder of six. If you didn't finish it off, you don't get the full marks. So you have to finish it the whole way out and end up with a remainder of 6 and then conclude that 3x minus 1 is not a factor. Okay, so the next question, this is clearly the most difficult thing in the revision sheet. And this is certainly the thing that as a class we found the most difficult this year. So obviously that means I'm putting one of them on the test. There's fair warning for you. In this question, I'm told that this quadratic is a factor of this cubic. And I'm asked to prove that q is equal to minus times a or plus 1. Now, when you get a question like this, that looks like total and utter gibberish at the moment. So don't worry about it until we get to nearly the end of the question. The thing you need to focus on is my quadratic is a factor of my cubic. Therefore, if I divide my, my quadratic into my cubic, the remainder will be 0. So when I get my remainder, I'm just going to let it equal to 0, and then I'll worry about this. So we just need to follow our four steps of long division. My first step in my long division is that you're going to divide. So you're going to take the first thing here and divide it into the first thing here. x squared into x cubed goes x times. Okay. Your second step then is you're going to multiply. So in order to multiply, you're going to take what you put on top and you're going to multiply it by all three of these. So x multiplied by x squared is x cubed. x multiplied by ax is ax squared. That should be plus ax squared. x multiplied by minus 1 is minus 1x. Now your third step in long division is you're going to subtract. In order to subtract, you have to change your signs. So that means that this will become a minus, this will become a minus, this will become a plus. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. And this is the first point where you're likely to make a mistake. Mathematically, it makes sense to just say that this is px squared minus ax squared, but that's not the way you want to go about it. So what I have on top, I have px squared, and what I have on the bottom is minus ax squared. Now, when you're writing this in your long division, you want to factorize out your x. So you want to factorize out x squared. So you actually want to write this as p minus a times x squared. So if I have px squared minus ax squared, I'm going to write that as p minus a times x squared. Now I need to do the exact same thing with my x's. On the top line with my x's, I have qx. And on the bottom line with my x's, I have, I have plus 1x. So I have qx plus 1x. Rather than writing it like that here, I'm going to factorize out my x. So if you factorize out x, you're left with q plus 1 times x. So life is just made a lot easier if you write it in this form rather than in this form. 
So qx plus 1x gives me plus q plus 1 times x. And then your fourth step for long division is that you're just going to take down the next term. And the next term in this case being plus or. We haven't accommodated for the or yet. And now I've done my four steps, I'm just going to start all over again, do the exact same process. So this time I'm going to divide x squared, or the first thing here, into the first thing here. x squared into p minus a times x squared. Well, the x squareds cancel each other out. And I'm just left with p minus a. That's my divide step. Your second step is you're going to multiply. So you're going to multiply p minus a by x squared. That gives you p minus a times x squared. Then you're going to multiply p minus a by ax. It's getting fairly messy here, so really the easiest thing to do is to just list it out. You can just call this p minus a times ax. If you multiply p minus a by that, it's just p minus a by that. Then the last thing is p minus a by minus 1 just becomes minus p minus a. So you just put it in brackets and put a minus in front of it. All you're doing is changing the signs. That's my second step. Now I need to move on to my third step, which is to subtract. In order to subtract, you have to change your signs. So this becomes a minus, this becomes a minus, and this becomes a plus. Now if I add them together, p minus ax squared minus p minus ax squared is zero. This gets really messy. Because we've no next term to take down, I know that what I'm about to write is my remainder. So if I'm about to write my rem remainder, I don't need to bother cleaning it up. I can just write it out as it is. So rather than cleaning it up as we did here, we're just going to write it out. The, the x that I have on the top is, so the, the x on top is just q plus 1 times x. The x that I have on the bottom is minus p minus a times ax. That's your first remainder. Your first remainder is just the coefficient of x. The second remainder are the numbers. So the number that I have on, my, on its own on the top is just or. Remember, we can consider or to be a number because there's no x there. The number that I have on the bottom is just plus p minus a. Okay, it's p minus a. So now I have two different remainders. And remember at the start of the question, it told me that this is a factor of that, which means that my remainder is zero. So I can let each remainder equal to zero. So on the left hand side here, I have, I can rewrite this as q plus one times x minus p minus a times ax, and I can let that equal to zero x. The only reason we're sticking in the x there is because then all of my x's will cancel. So I can just say that actually q plus one Time, q plus 1 minus p minus a times a is equal to 0. So we can, more, we can just ignore our zeros there, let the coefficients equal to 0. And my second remainder, I can just say that or plus p minus a is equal to 0. Now, I want to do this bigger because I'm running out of space here. So if you want to pause it there, I'm going to start from the top and we're going to worry about how are we going to get to this point. Okay, so it is only at this stage that you should start to worry about this. I've been asked to prove that q is equal to minus times a or plus 1. So there's a glaringly obvious problem here. In, this, in my answer, I want a q, I want an a, and I want an or. In this equation, I have a q, a p, and an a. In this equation, I have an or, a p, and an a. So clearly the problem is you have to get rid of your p. I have to get rid of my p here. And because I have two equations, I'm going to be able to manage that. I want you to treat this exactly the same as you would treat a quadratic equation where you have two unknowns and one of them is an x squared and one of them is a y squared. You take your simple equation and you isolate the letter you want to get rid of. So I clearly want to get rid of my p. So I'm going to take my simpler equation. It actually doesn't matter which one you take. But I'm going to take my simpler equation and isolate my p. If I decide to get p on its own, I'm going to bring the or to the other side, it becomes minus or. Bring the a across, it becomes plus a. So I know that p is equal to minus or plus a, which means that I can just sub this in instead of p in my other equation. So if I just do that, I'm going to get to this relatively straightforward. So I get q plus 1 minus, and instead of p, I'm going to put in minus or plus a. And then I also have a minus a in the bracket, 
and that's multiplied by a equals zero. So at this stage, at least I've got the right letters. I have Q's, O's, and A's, which is what I want. Um, if you simplify your bracket here, it works out nicely. I have Q plus one minus, and then in my bracket, clearly the A and the minus A are gonna cancel, so I just have minus OR. And then I'm multiplying that by A, and it's equal to zero. So now I just have Q plus one minus by minus gives me plus, and a by or gives me a or. So that just becomes plus a or equals zero. You get to this stage, clearly I need to isolate my q, so I just want to get q on its own. So bring the one to the other side, it becomes minus one. I'll put it over here. Bring the a or to the other side, it becomes minus a or. I'm just rearranging that so it's in the same form as this. Now the last line, they've just given it to you in a weird format. So all they've done here is it's the exact same as this, but they factorized out minus one. So notice that if you factorize out minus one, let's imagine you're factorizing out minus one, minus one into minus a or would give you plus a or, minus one into minus one would give you plus one. So all they did, you don't even need the one there, but all they did basically was they factorized out minus one and gave it to you in a different format. So yeah, that is, that, now that is, that is a very difficult long division question. But I want you to watch this video again and again. Make sure you understand each step. Okay, the next question here, you're given a cubic and you're asked to solve it. Uh, solve means find your roots. Now, we got we more or less went to finish this one in class last week, but I have a video on that as well. It's 2015 paper one question two, and I'm gonna link it underneath this video, so it's in the link on this page as well. Um, just make sure you're clear on that. You will get something like a cubic. Now the next few questions on the handout are just simultaneous equations, so hopefully we'll get a chance to practice a few of those on Monday before the test. Um, so I want you to try those yourself and we'll go through them in class. Okay, so hopefully this video made sense and all, they're all exam questions and what I give you in the test, it's going to be all exam questions as well. So just, this is the similar, I'm just giving you the kind of idea of what, the kind of thing that will come up. Um, and I'll see you all on Monday.